Hello everyone. Welcome to Precision Coding. My name is Dave DiBiazio, Vice President of Sales and Marketing at Precision Coding. And I'm Dick Buxton, Director of Process and Application Engineering. Today we'll be talking about coding hypotubes. Just a little background on precision coding. We're the leading authority on coding medical instruments, both interventional and surgical instruments, as well as robotic platforms in the world. And we're doing a series of video blogs to help answer the common questions that you may have and that our customers have regarding different coding platforms. So without further ado, we'll discuss hypotubes. Dick, are there any special considerations when coding hypotubes versus, let's say, standard guide wires or coil wires? Hypotubes are very fragile, David. I mean, they will kink, bend, and damage very easily. When you ship hypotubes to us, the protection of them coming to us is highly important. They usually are shipped in a hard tube, straight in length. Very good. Uh, well, that brings up um, the next consideration. Is it difficult to fixture and handle hypotubes versus the standard wires? <laughs> yes, very much so. Core wires are much easier. They, there's got some structural stability to them. The hypotube, being a very thin wall, is very easy to bend or kink. The fixturing of such is a, a little difficult, a little different than the regular core wire, but still tape or mechanical fixturing is available. Yeah, and I would think the smaller the diameter of the, uh, of the hypotube, the more difficult it is. True. And the walls uh, are thinner. The, the smallest hypotube that we currently handle is about 10 thousandths. That is small. <laughs> um, but we do do larger diameters and we do do longer lengths up to about 110 inches in length. Oh, very good. So how do you fixture these tubes? How do you, how do you attach them to the fixtures? Well, there's two different methods. Um, in, in the 10 thousandths diameter, it's very highly unlikely you're going to be able to get a tooling wire inside that hypotube. So mm -hmm. those are usually taped onto a fixture. In using tape, and given the length of the hypotube, I need at least three inches of area that would be uncoated on each end to support that length of hypotube. That makes sense. On, on shorter ones, I could probably live with a little less of a hole point. Um, the other method is if we go to a mechanical where you actually have the ability to put a mandrel inside, um, I can actually put that under a mechanical fixture and coat the whole length of the hypotube. Understood. But when you get down to that 10 thousandths, I'll bet it's, it's difficult to use a mechanical fixture. It, very much so. It, it's like trying to push a string in a straw. You're just not going to get that fine wire in a 10 thousandths hypotube. You know, you just mentioned a tooling wire or a mandrel in, in, in some cases. Um, can that manual be built into the fixture? Uh, really, it depends on the length of the hypotube I'm trying to coat and its ability to support itself in, in the, the length. Uh, there are some ways I can incorporate that tool or support mechanism in the fixture, but again, it has a lot to do with your particular needs. Okay. And um, I get this question often. Obviously, there's cost associated with the mandrels. <laughs> and uh, can you reuse the mandrels? We always prefer new, <laughs> but we understand that as well. Um, with the smaller diameter mandrels, I, I would think that it's going to be difficult to reuse, uh, and hopefully the cost associated with that is not going to be uh, to overcome the project. But um, in the larger diameter mandrels, they can be reused. Uh, preferably, they are clean, not bent, and, and you know full length so we don't have an assortment of lengths of mandrels coming to us. Now that makes sense, Dick, because um, uh, you know you can perhaps use a mandrel maybe three times? Uh, again, it all depends on how well they're preserved in their use. Perfect. And you know, you did mention how clean the mandrels need to be. I, I had assumed with a hypotube especially, um, cleanliness is very important both for the tooling and for the tube itself. Uh, yes, uh, in fact, there's no way that we can check the cleanliness of the ID of the hypotube. So we're hoping that whoever you're getting from has done that yeah. cleanliness. Yeah, that's uh, very important. The, the other is the mandrel itself. Hopefully it's clean before inserted. Uh, there's nothing worse than finding out you have a dirty mandrel in a clean hypotube. It, it kind of defeats the purpose. <laughs> yeah, I know that, that, that's important. Um, you know, uh, you mentioned the insertion of that mandrel and everything has to be clean. Sometimes we actually receive uh, the um, 
units with the manual inserted by the customer and then sometimes we do that work ourselves it's very important for you as a customer if you're going to do that work on the front side that everything is very clean the manual and the hypo too mm -hmm. dick thank you for your time i hope this was informative for you there's, there's a lot of information a lot of questions that are answered on our website that's www.precisioncoding.com thank you again for for visiting us been a pleasure pleasure